So good afternoon, everyone. My name is Tony, and I'm going to present you an example of deep learning. The main idea behind this work is to automate a task to detect malaria parasite from a blood smear. This presentation is supervised by our lecturer, Dr. Alessandro Krim. We all know that a malaria is a blood disease caused by the plasmodium parasites transmitted through a bite of the female anophel mosquito. So since this is a blood disease, so we need to do a blood smear to diagnose the disease and use some techniques to detect the infected cells and the infected cells in the blood. Many techniques have been used for this detection. For example, they use machine learning techniques and, and other stuff. But after many works and many experience, they found that uh, deep learning models, such as the convolutional neural network, promise and height and superior result as a feature extractor and classifier in this type of problem. So in this presentation, I will explain you somehow the feature extraction and the classification has been done. And after I will show you one of the architecture used. But to do the feature extraction and classification, we need first to detect the region of interest from the blood smear. Here, the region of interest is the red blood cells. So to do this, we need, we need the picture of the thin blood smear. So you can, you can take a picture using the microscope to detect, uh, to get all the present cells inside the, inside the blood smear. And after that, they use some technique using image processing and image segmentation to detect the red blood cells present in the images. The first technique that they used is uh, Laplacian of Gaussian filter. This filter detects the centroid of, the, of each individual red blood cells. This is kind of taking edges of the, each red blood cells. And after that, they use some markers, markers to segment the cells. This one is kind of taking the contour of the cells. So after getting all the red blood cells present, we can now apply the pre-trained CNN to classify the infected and infected cells. But before all those techniques, since we just focus on the red blood cells. They use some filters and another operation to remove the white blood cells and the another cells in the images. So after removing those another cells, then you do these techniques. Uh, let's see these techniques in this image clearly. In the column A, these are the images taken from the microscope. These are the input image. So, and in the column B, this is the first technique, the LOG, the Laplacian of Gaussian. It detects all the, all the centroid of each, each red blood cells. Then in the column C, this is the segmentation mask. Then in the column D, now you, um, you superimpose, like we combine them in the, with the original image to get all the red blood cells present in the images. So after getting the, the image in the D column, we, know can, we can now apply the CNN model for each of these cells. So now let's see the action of the CNN 
So each load, each red load says. So by definition, the CNN model is made of convolutional layers and fully connected layers. Uh, after many experience and many works, they found that extracting the feature from the fully connected layers, we will have a good classification for the for the infected and the infected sets. So that's what they did, the, ex the feature extraction. Let's see some image of an example of the action of two convolutional layers with two different sets. We can see in the left one, it's an infected cell. In the right one, it's a normal cell. So these are the action of the convolutional layer for this infected and normal cell. After doing the several convolutional layers and the fully connected layers, we came up with each features which characterize the infected and the infected cells. For example, we can see in the infected cells the presence of this red dot will be one of the features to characterize it. So that's how they do the classification for each infected set and the normal set. So now let's see the conventional neural network used. As I said, uh, CNN is a class of deep learning model which contains uh, convolutional layers and fully connected layers. For this work, they use several architecture of CNN, but I will just show you one of them since the time is just a short time. So for this presentation, I will show you the AlexNet architecture. The AlexNet contains five convolutional layers and three fully connected layers. So you can see from the, the pictures, the, the architecture. Each convolutional layers have its number of kernels and the size of each kernels. For example, the first convolutional layers use 96 kernels of size 11 times 11. Then the second one use 256 kernels with size of five by five and so on and so on. We also use the max pooling for the, the output of the first convolutional layer and the output of the, the second and the, five, the fifth convolutional layer. One interesting thing about this AlexNet is the AlexNet achieved the best result in Imaginate, imaginate competition in 2012 for classifying 1.2 million, million height resolution images. So this is one reason for, for them to choose this AlexNet for this work. So one thing to dif that AlexNet differentiate from another architecture is AlexNet use the rectified linear unit as activation function. This makes faster the training. And in this work, they use a dropout of 0 0.5 to reduce the overfitting. So about the data used for the training, they took a picture of uh, Tim Blood smear from one, 150 infected and 50 infected patients. Using, the, using a smartphone attached to light microscope. They, they also use the cross validation to split the data for getting an optimal layer for the extraction filter. Yeah, they use the five cross, five fold cross validation. So after doing the classification, we came up with this performance metric for of the AlexNet. 
So after the classification, AlexNet presents an accuracy of 0 0.944, sensitivity of 0 0.947, and the specificity of 0 0.41. According to this accuracy, we can see that it's a good classification. The AlexNet presents a good, very good classification. And about the sensitivity, since we are just focusing on the parasite detection, it makes sense that the sensitivity is greater than the specificity. So in conclusion, we have seen that the CNN model could serve as, so, as a feature extraction as well as image classification. And the result is very good. This work, this work also showed that the very high accuracy is achieved by these learning techniques, which surpass some models in the machine learning. For example, if you take the SVM, the SVM presents an accuracy of 0 0.92. And also, you can see that the CNN presents less work than the machine learning methods. So there are the this is the paper that I use for this. You can go through them if you want to more know more about the work. And this is the end of my presentation. Thank you. So now I mean uh, of course we are all sp spread all over but you can still ask questions. So I uh, just raise your hand and I will uh, uh, unmute you. Medase. 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 So uh, Tony, uh, La Grace has a question for you. Okay. Yeah. Uh, thank you for your presentation, Tony. Okay, welcome. I know that uh, the question that I'm going to ask you is not too related to your presentation, is for the future. I want to know, after doing now the, the extraction, the distinction between the, the uninfected cell and the infected cell, what mm. could be the next step? What, what is the important to do that distinction? What is what? Can you can you repeat it again? I'm saying that what is the importance to to do the classification between the uninfected cell and the infected cell? Um, okay. So we need to do the classification to know that the patient are infected from the disease or not. So in this term, they use they want to use the smartphone to detect from the blood smear if the patient are infected or they are infected with the disease. So you can use the this model to do this thing. So that's it. Yeah, we know that is we have a crucial we have a crucial of of infected cell that you could say that yeah, the patient is suffering to have the disease or not. Yes. But are they the same in the and you are you are method to predict that yes it's it's kind of prediction but it's using the image image processing and those stuff to make the detection faster for this for this thing. Oh. So it's like automated instead of having a person looking at the microscope. Yes, yes. Someone is just taking a picture and then you are getting the result. So you don't need a person looking at the microscope. Okay. Thank you. To automate the technician looking at the microscope. So are there questions?